You never really know what the future holds, and as scary as that can be sometimes, it's also kind of exciting because I think it just, you get the idea that you're gonna do something fun as long as you make it fun. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, but like, because we're all beginners and such, there's like some really fun introductory things we do in acting class. One yeah. of my favorites that we just did is you actually take the lyrics to a song and you just read it out as a monologue. Really? Yeah, because there's a lot of pressure when it's like, oh, do a monologue. You're like, oh, like, what do I choose from? It releases the pressure to be like, oh, just like choose a song. Because like, ideally, it's lines you already know well. So you can focus less on, did I memorize the perfect lines? And That's like, actually a good observation. Being live and expressing myself. Yeah. Actually, well, JHB, do you have a favorite song whose lyrics you know intimately? Let me look at my on repeat playlist. The first song that came to mind that I recognize the lyrics to is Bohemian Rhapsody, just because I sing that all the time. On repeat right here. All right. Well, I would love, can you give us a dramatic... Oh, reading no. of a couple of your favorite lines there. Oh, God. Okay, I'll just do Bohemian. Uh, is this just real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in the landslide, no escape from reality. Yes. Okay, I'm so glad I got that. You nailed Let's that. Say. All right. Uh, okay. That was good. It's actually surprisingly hard to not go into tune and melody when you're just going through the lyrics. Just because every time you've seen you've saying it in the past you just yeah. want to hit the same tone every oh, time oh 100% and it's also funny because everyone's going through their monologues and like many of these lines just like rhyme <laughs> yeah their song lyrics and so you're like having people be like really serious and emotional and then there's like a little bit of the Dr. Seuss element they're like pouring their heart out but they're also rhyming and I'm like hmm I don't know how I feel about this the the potential in your yeah exactly <laughs> the other exercise so I was really sad, but I actually missed most of my acting class this week because it conflicted with Eric's pizza party. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but Eric hosted the world's largest pizza party and the world's largest pizza in LA. Wasn't it like a Pizza Hut thing? Yeah. So <laughs> it ended up being a lot of Pizza Hut branding because he did it with Pizza Hut. But my guy, Eric, it was his idea. He came up with it. Pizza Hut was just along for the ride. Okay. And they actually did break the record. As a classic, I was like, oh, I like really have this thing I'm, I'm doing for my personal fulfillment, which makes me like very happy. Yeah. But also like, oh, but I feel obligated to go do this thing. That yeah. I didn't really go into the acting class. I miss most of it. I'm wondering if like that kind of comes with content because... I, I don't know. When when I think about content, it's like I enjoy doing it so much, but at the same time, the idea of it potentially being like, I don't want to say forced, but just like some people aren't like as happy to do it sometimes, which yeah. kind of sucks because I don't know. When you grow up, you have that idea that you want to create content. And then after a while, you're just like, I'm a little stressed, but I'm still enjoying it. So I don't know. Do you feel that? Do I? Feel, I don't I don't want to say I feel that. But at the same time, it's that idea of I want to keep creating the best content. And I fear the idea of me not creating the best content, which means that I'm not doing the best for myself. And that, mm. that is hard. But I mean, regardless, I still enjoy it. Uh, I've lately like stopped thinking about like how many how many views do I have? Because like if I don't get the most views on something that I worked hard on, it used to be like kind of crushing but I've kind of grown into the, to the enjoyment of like, I can create content that I enjoy making and I don't have to think about the views basically, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I love the maturity when you're like, it used to be like soul crushing. I'm because, just being honest. No, because it is. That's why I love, you're just like, yeah, it was. I acknowledge that it was and I'm beginning to move past it. I feel like external validation is like a drug. Yeah. Like you get a little of it and I just want more. The uh, YouTube ranking one of ten thing is uh, oh gosh, it's fun on the days you get one of ten, but the then days that you don't, it's not. But other nine times you don't get one out of ten or whatever. Well, that's not actually the math probability works, but you don't get a one out of ten. Yeah, and it's just like goddamn. But I think I've, I, I'm hoping myself that I've grown into the uh, enjoyment of creating my own content that I, en I enjoy making. It's mainly like stuff yeah. I like to look back on and think like, yeah, I did that. Versus like, how many views did that get? Good. Okay. Cool. So I don't know. 
For those of you who don't know, I'm here today Hi. <laughs> with JHB team. We just went right into it. Bohemian Rhapsody dramatic monologue. Now we're hearing what it's like to make content. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> I actually know from your YouTube channel, you have some OG videos posted there from back when you were in high school. That is true. I actually have a bunch of videos from middle school that I on that channel that I privated. Oh, no, but why? Because it's my middle school video. No, I can't, but it's I can't great. rewatch it. I, it, it. Yeah, it can be great, but at the same time, it's like, I'd rather just leave this to <laughs> me. Oh, God. It's cringe for me, but at the same time, it's it's something I could look back on maybe once and be like, that was fun. What was the Never first again. middle school video you posted that has now since been hidden? Actually, to be fair, I created my channel in 2011 Christmas Day 2011. I don't know why Chris. Oh, I got an Elgato game or not an Elgato. I got a Dazzle, which is a game capture right before yeah. like Elgato when like HD PVRs and stuff were a thing. I got that when I was playing like Modern Warfare 3 and I was like, I want to make videos of just me doing stuff, whether it's trolling or just like, am I good at the game? You know, I kind of wasn't, <laughs> but why not? So when I got something to record my game finally on PlayStation, I made a channel and it was just a Modern Warfare 3 clip. It was like my first video. How old were you? I was nine. I was nine. That is like <laughs> precocious, man. Now I'm 20. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're like you've lived your entire life since then. It's weird. Yeah. Which is why I'm glad, like, even though most of the videos are private, I can still look back at them and just think about, like, I remember the day I posted this. It was that exact day. Wow. That's crazy to think about. And it's... It's fun for me. If you were to run now into nine-year-old GHB making that first Modern Warfare clip, what would you tell him? Um, what would I? I'd say learn editing quickly. It took me a while to learn editing, to be honest. You're like, you're just like, get good, kid. I used YouTube Video Editor. For, yeah, for no first shame. Three Nothing or four wrong. Years, which is wild for me to think about, but I don't know. I did. So I'm so curious because like I'm trying to think back when I was nine years old. And I'll be honest, JGB, I think I wasn't even like a real person. <laughs> I was still in the like do what my parents tell me mode. Like I should go to school and like get good grades. I just think it's super cool that you're like, hey, like I really want to make this. I really want to create this. I think it finally hit for me. Like basically what you just described hit for me once I got the job for 100 Thieves. Because I always had that idea of like I'm going to go to college, stuff like that. Um I wasn't the best student in school, but I would always get my homework done, which was nice. good enough for me. But it was that idea of like, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Plus, I didn't actually get uh, big online until maybe 2019, which is when I was around like a senior in high school. And it was that idea of like throughout high school, I'm just going to go to college, stuff like that, which I had no problem with. I was very like happy to do. Um, but it's weird to think about. I guess it's weird to visualize the idea that I uh, just I made content and I made it big, which is kind of yeah. weird to think about. Like people, and we were saying this on serious, like people now know who you are. You could make somebody's day. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's weird. But also like my whole, th the whole thing that helped me as well is like, I am very awkward in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> but it's that idea of uh, when I created the show TB TBH with JHB on the 100 Thieves YouTube channel, the whole idea around it was just, me being completely awkward talking to creators that are now my friends nowadays, which is pretty cool to think about, but it's also just, it's it's really cool to see the progression between like when I first was put in front of a camera and I could not talk or do a simple intro without stuttering like one or two times. Wow. Uh, Nico Lol walking into the room and I'm like, oh my God. So it's fun stuff like that, which yeah. is like now enjoyable for me to look back on because it's kind of like a progression of, I, I did that, now I'm- How you've grown. I've, I've grown, which is kind of cool to think about. You mentioned awkward, and I've actually never felt that you're awkward. I appreciate Genuinely. that. Genuinely. Now, this may be because I'm also awkward, and so we're just sharing one brain cell. I mean, that makes it even better, <laughs> honestly. I don't know. I'm just, I was never social. Well, I, I was social, but like I would, I would rarely go out in high school because I spent most of my time in front of the computer. Twitter was kind of like my, my thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's cool to think about, but at the same time, I feel like that and ha ending up having that progression was actually like really good for me. See, I think of you as authentic. And to your point, not being social in high school, dude, I was a huge nerd in high school. I had like no friends. Like <laughs> yeah, the two of us also like, let's be real, because think of it this way. If we were just like these super popular social people in high school, like why would we have then like spent our lives in a way like 
it's not a normal thing necessarily to like, oh, let me like go make a living like being on camera. I never imagined it either. I in yeah. high school I was always someone who like I knew everyone, but I was kind of like, I, I don't I don't know. I wasn't the coolest. Yeah. But it, I don't know. It's well, I I don't I just I never imagined. Like how it. how if you had to describe your time in high school as a chapter in your life, like how would you title that chapter? Like how do you think of that arc in the protagonist's journey? confusing <laughs> no it, it was it was fun i enjoyed high school it was that idea of like i wasn't really sure what i wanted to do yet i had an interest in like st stuff video production wise but it was mainly stuff behind the camera i never imagined myself being in front of the camera unless it was like my own youtube stuff video game related i haven't really done as much video game content as i've gotten older which uh i don't really have a problem with i i, I enjoy playing games but i'd rather just like stream them on twitch or yeah yeah but I don't know. It's weird to think about um, just me in high school in that setting and then just the difference in like three years because I was always the quiet kid in high school. So wild. I, and I, to be honest, I still am. If I go to a party with a bunch of creators, I usually sit on the couch and I'm just on my phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just because I'm I'm not I I'm a social person in some situations, but not every situation. <laughs> I get that so much. I far prefer one on ones. Oh, uh, yeah. That's my favorite because I feel like I actually get to know you as a human being. Yeah. Like parties are so hard. I actually think that's how we first got to know each other because there's like so many parties and there's like so many talk, so many things. And it just felt nice to be like, oh, hey, like I'm just going to come. Let's just like talk, you it's know? It's awesome. Yeah. And like keep it chill. But like it's hard because there's always so many people going saying hi and overstimulation. Yeah. Oh, man. It, it's it's crazy. To so how, how did you get you mentioned initially when you were on camera, like you mentioned, like Nico would literally walk into a room and be like, oh, wow, like this, this is this is like a thing. Now, like you're very comfortable in front of the camera. Like what helped mentally? I think just time. I think just doing it a bunch of times. The whole thing for me was the idea of me having a show on the Hundred Thieves channel when I first got it was really insane to me because it yeah. was it was that idea of like people would really watch the stuff I do or talk about. Luckily, the editors came in clutch because they helped me with every awkwardness to mm. like make the uh, make the video pleasing for the the audience instead of just having to watch raw footage of me being awkward <laughs> and cringe. <laughs> right. Um, I think. Oh, I mean, like the first shoot I ever had was with Nico Lol. It was just a straight up interview. I think I got like three or. Four three or two hours of sleep that night just wow. out of the idea of I had a stomach ache. I was stressed out. I'm going to be in front of a camera tomorrow in front of an entire production crew. I am in shambles. <laughs> yeah, it was great though. I was really happy I got to do it because over time, like I said, the progression was insane and meeting Nico Lowell, that was the first time I met Nico on camera as well. Like we followed each other. Yeah. Um, it was cool. And over time I've gotten to meet many other creators that I've either looked up to or just like, Never would have imagined myself sitting next to like I sat next to uh, Gunna. I interviewed yeah. him, which is a really weird thought for me to think about, but it's pretty hilarious. And I mean, other creators like uh, Nate shot himself, Courage, yeah. uh, Valkyrie. It's wild to think about, but I'm very happy that I'm able to do it. That's part of the reason why I was really excited to do this with you today, because the same way you're talking about them, a lot of people think of you that way. You are a guest. Thank you. <laughs> It's weird for me to visualize the idea that I'm a I'm a known person online. Although I shouldn't be surprised considering like I make content, so it's kind of like yeah, but at the, at the same time it's like growing into that I I guess I don't want to say bubble, but just growing into that I don't want to say stardom. Yeah. I don't know what to say. It's the fact that there are now a lot of people who know you and you don't know them. Because usually when we get to know people, it's symmetrical. Yeah. I meet you, you know me. As soon as that becomes asymmetrical, that's where it gets a little bit weird. That is true. Huh. I think also going to an event like TwitchCon is kind of wild for me because yeah. I I forget that like people people come up to me and I, it's awesome. I love it. But I, I, I always forget that like... I just I create content. People know me online, stuff like that. I'll walk around and just be like, "Oh, hi!" Like, I, it it's awesome. I love it. When was the first moment you were like, "This is a thing"? Like, someone came up to her photo, or someone recognized you, or maybe your parents or your friends. Oh, I think just in general, like getting recognized in a Call of Duty lobby is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, because it's that idea of like someone you don't know knows you. That's 
and like for a creator getting recognized for the first time is genuinely one of the best feelings ever um i went to uh you've heard of ruby's right the diner yeah i have for ruby I, tuesdays or different i'm not sure but right, it's, it's basically 50s fashion diner okay yeah uh yeah i went there like three or four days ago and then i got recognized by a group of like four kids oh, that's <laughs> like cute. just sitting together at lunch they're eyeing me and like they come up to you are you jhb and i'm like yeah <laughs> it's awesome though I, I love it i feel like Figuring out who we are is really hard because there's always external validation. And that's sort of your point. You're like, oh, like I produce videos, I get millions of views. And if it doesn't, like, who am I? To me, I've thought of it as what are things that I've done that are central to the story of Eric that I can fall back on, even if I don't get any external validation. And I feel like there's this really interesting pillar in who you are now, which is like this growth that you've gone from gosh, I'm on camera with Nico and like what is happening to like, this is just a thing I do. Yeah. And like, that's cool. Like that's something you've done that dinner table conversations for the rest of your life. People are going to ask you about. I think it's also happening at a really interesting time in my life of just like, I was in high school when I got my job at hundred thieves. And then I'm like, that was almost three years ago. I, I was literally like a senior like getting out of class at 3 p.m. and then working until like 8 or 9 p.m., whether it was going to the office or just working from home. Because I think I, I got hired and then COVID happened like three weeks later. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I Just the idea of like when I got my job and stuff in my life is really weird to think about considering I was 17, but this company wanted to hire me, which is a yeah. pretty cool feeling. And as, as well as like telling my parents, they, the, <laughs> the idea of a company wanting to hire me when I told them, they were like, they do, like, but, but it, why? Yeah, exactly. Cause they knew like the stuff I did online, but at the same time, they, they, they weren't really familiar with the aspect of like, what is content creation? This org will work with you to create content. They, they, they weren't used to that, but now they're like the biggest hundred T fans. And like, I was just on cutie Cinderella's master baker show. Oh, did you win? I got out on the first episode. Oh no! <laughs> but I came Rigged. back. I came back as a judge on the final, so we're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Wait, why did they take you out on the first episode, I mean, cutie? Do you not have taste buds? Like, what's going on? Oh Man. no, she she had taste buds. They were they were the worst cupcakes she's ever tasted. Did v she say that? Valkyrie spat in the trash. <laughs> you know, some people pay great money for that honor. So, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Valkyrie did say this is the worst food I've ever eaten. So. You know, I'll, I'll take. I'll hey, if you can't be the best, being the worst is also kind of cool. I did earn a reward of some sort. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't the best, but hey, Valkyrie knows who I am. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like my my parents and my like cousins, like my aunt, all that stuff. They would watch that like show, yeah. and then they would talk to me about it. And it's it's cool to think about, but it's also that idea of like the idea of my family watching my content. I love it, but. Yeah. If they're watching it on the TV together, I just can't be in the same room. Yeah, because too I, much. I could say the most cringiest or just worst thing imaginable that I'm just like, I don't want to see what my parents' reactions is well, to this. What I love is they might actually watch this later on. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. My mom messaged me, and I've never shared this content that I do with her. And she's like, oh, I like saw you. Like You look so good. She sent me a screenshot, but it's just like, a photo of me on the TV. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. She's watching it. And I was like, well, I actually do talk about my family and childhood growing up, which in many ways I found really hard. And I was like, oh. and she's like, if it's good. And I'm like, all right, like, yeah. it's fine, I guess. I mean, I think it's great for my parents. I love when they watch my stuff. I, yeah. I, I just sometimes can't be there sometimes yeah, to watch it. A lot. But it, it's cool talking to them about it as well as like, I feel like it's fun for them to have the idea that like their son is being watched by like whether it's a group people. of people like I remember we talked about this earlier the idea of when it comes to views and numbers when you visualize them so like only 20 views makes like a class a classroom a classroom of people are watching you and then like if you have over a thousand like what's a high school probably like yeah exactly and that I never really thought about that until I started actually making more and more content to where I was like this amount of people watched my content that's a person, that's a person. That's weird for me to think about, but it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, today, you basically have gone to like the University of 100 Thieves. Oh, no. <laughs> that's a good thing, right? Wait, what do you mean? Like, that's been your college experience in a way, because you haven't like... That's fair. 
actually yeah. really, you basically said you've been a hundred thieves. You've been in the content world now from like what, age 16, 17, 17? Yeah, I think I, oh my God. I think I blew up uh, when I was 17. 17 to like, and now you said you're 20. Yeah. I t- oh my God. Like, I turned 21 in five months. Ah. Yeah. You, I was trying, like, dude, this is like, this is like your college experience. It's, it's like, w- it's weird to think about. It's awesome. I love it. But at the same time, it's like, damn, I'm really growing up. <laughs> what do you think when you were thinking about whether to go back to school or not? Was that ever serious? Like, oh, I should like leave this world and go back or just like, nah, like I like this. Let's just keep going and see what happens. I think I've had those moments where I will overthink everything regarding whether it's like my personality or content. Yeah. Because since I'm such like an awkward figure in the content that I, I, I'm, I'm in, it's that idea of like, well, when I get older, if I'm still awkward, that's just like, it's not going to be as appealing as much because the mm. whole idea of like my story, I guess, is that I was an awkward kid who wasn't really social at all just going around meeting these creators, which is like what a big part of my content is mm-hmm. or was. And so nowadays it's, um, I mean, I'm friends with these creators. Yeah. So I, I guess it's just, it's that thought of like, I don't really know what I want to do next besides I'm working at hundred T. I love, I love working there. Mm-hmm. It's that idea of like, what if I did go back to school? Cause I mean, like, I think my thing was also, that I was so young when I started working at 100T that a lot of the people that I was working with weren't really that same age. Mm -hmm. I think they were like, they were in their 20s and I was 17. Yeah. And it was like, okay, uh, cool. I'm going to this meeting. Uh, Yeah, fun. I don't know. I think there was that idea of like, if I were to go back to school as well as like maybe learn something uh, that I had interest in, which I I didn't really know what. I I liked film, but I mean, I'm doing film for my job, so I'm pretty much set. Um, but it's that idea of like the social life, basically, mm. like having people around my age, basically. Since right. Because you've basically grown through your college experience with adults. Yeah. <laughs> working adults around you. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm very happy I did because I got like a head, a head start basically. Yeah. And like, uh, what adult life is like, even though I'm not, I, I still act like a child a lot, <laughs> but I don't know. It's, it's, I enjoy it. I like that. So we're going to play a game. Okay. For those of you who don't know, it's based off 36 questions to fall in love, or we're not really strangers. Yes. And the premise, New York Times wrote a study about this. They took randomly selected pairs of people. Okay. They gave them questions all about vulnerability, like, hey, I'm going to share something about myself, and reciprocity, like, please don't slap it down and be mean, maybe even share something back. And at the end of the study, many of these couples of people ended up becoming friends with each other. One couple even got married. Oh, okay. The stakes, stakes are high. Okay. We're on f- around. <laughs> I know you're not. You're looking in my eyes. That's how I know you're, oh, you're yeah, not it's lying. Serious. Well, actually, the way the game starts, so we have three levels of questions. We'll take turns drawing cards. We'll go okay. through a couple from each level. It begins with eye contact. I'm not even kidding. Oh, no. Okay. This is part of the state rules of the game. So I'm going to count to three, two, one. And then after that, we're going to make intimate eye contact. And then the first person who looks away or actually just blinks... They're going to draw the first card. Does that sound good? What? Okay, okay. All right. Three, two, <laughs> one, go. Hey. Hey there. Oh, my God. This is hard already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you blinked. You blinked. All right, yeah. That's fair. That's oh, fair. Oh, gosh. It's actually hard, right? I think just because I didn't expect it to be that, like, funny. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> it's like, what is going on? I'm looking to his eyes and he's looking to mine. All right, level one. And if it's a wild card, we put those back because they're always like really random. Things. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, no. Do you think I've ever been fired from a job? If so, what for? You? Am I like answering? I'm you? answering yours. Well, you're still 100 thieves so as far yeah, as we know. Yeah, pretty much no. Pretty much no. <laughs> I love we both just like looked at the question. And we're like, we're like, no, nah, I don't. To the think best so. of our knowledge, I don't believe I have. JHB is not fired, <laughs> and hopefully, well, what did you do? Did you do anything before joining Hunter Thieves? No, I, I mainly worked as an editor for the Mob. There were times at Hunter T where I did think I was going to get fired. Oh, <laughs> really? In my first three weeks of a, uh, let me repeat that. In my first three weeks of working at Hundred uh, Thieves. I would make memes and stuff for the main Twitter. There was a meme I made of our Valorant team with a copyrighted song because it was an original theme song. What was the, the song? The Pink Panther theme. Do-do. 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 
Do 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 do. And it was like creators sneaking up on each other. I thought, ah, la, la, la. No, it's very appropriate. Funny. Uh, I posted it a week later. DMCA strike on the account. We're locked out for like oh. a period of time. My, I, the thought process of, oh my God, this is it. I'm shocked. <laughs> it was insane. But luckily they were cool about it. They were just like, don't use copyrighted music. And I was like, I, I understand now. That must have been so stressful. It was, it was that idea of like, damn, this job I worked really hard for. The f- three weeks in, I f***ed it up. <laughs> I can cuss, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We had Minx on. You know what? That's fair. That's, fair. <laughs> that's a good example. I was literally watching the footage yesterday and counting. It's like over 50 times at least. Oh my God. So you're in, you're in good grounds. Typical means. A hundred percent. I think your point on, oh God, like I was so scared I was going to get fired. I went through that too. And it's like this really weird like psychological thing. When you're like scared you're going to get fired, it's actually really hard to like do good work. It's that idea of like you want to create the best work out there, but you're stressing yourself out even more. Because yeah, it's like and, one wrong step. And when you do that, you're just like, you're not at your best. Yeah. Damn. Uh, should we do the eye contact thing again? Oh, you want to do one more? Okay. Oh actually, wait, it's a, it's a. Well, I'm touched. Let's do it one more. So usually we actually only do it once. I didn't beginning. know that. Okay. But no, I'm. We'll do it this time. I'll draw a card, but we'll okay. do eye contact again. All, All right. right. Three, two. One, go. Smiling again, that's not good. Usually people don't smile when they do this, but, you know, all for it. We'll do it smiling. I think I just, like, I fall in the moment, basically. <laughs> I, I, okay, I blinked. Okay. All right, all right, okay. we're good, okay. we're good. Right, we're good. Time, it worked out this time. I'm going to pull a card. Okay. I'll put this one back. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's smart. We'll, we'll, we'll just put it here. Okay. Wild card. Wild, wild card. <laughs> These wild cards are always insane. Actually, this is not bad. So I'm going to reframe it slightly, but tell me tell me something that others would never guess just looking at you. Like even in the space we're in now, right? Yeah. In the creator role. What's something you feel like people you've never gotten to express that side of yourself? That's a... Uh... I don't know. I need to think about that. I mean, one thing is I'm a fast typer. A lot of people were shocked. Ooh. They put me in 100 Thieves typing keyboard video, and I blew away all of the, like, the Fortnite uh, pro players in it, and everyone, like even in production, so was your shocked. Your APM is legendary. It was, I think the best I got one time was like one, I think it's 140 to 150, which is awesome for me when I got it. But, um, yeah, it, it was it was really fun for me to go into that 100T shoot and like type away. And then yeah. they were just like, shocked. how did you get so good? I was on the computer since I was two. Just spent most get of my out time of in here. my room. I, I know it's it's weird. No, I don't think it's weird. Wait, I'm more just like, what were you doing as a two year old? Like, how did you even know computers work? Like, what were you doing? I don't know. I My brother, Chuck, he's big on the uh, he's big in the technology. Like nowadays, I was able to. Uh, get him to meet like creators like cutie cinderella and stuff like that and he's been like lately producing some of the shows like master baker and stuff which is awesome my brother got me into technology at such a young age as well as like video games so anything that involved me being in front of a screen was the best oh, yeah. for me natural the yeah i was playing games like <laughs> i think i played chess but looking back on it i i if you put me in front of a chessboard now i have no idea what to I, like hey, how man, to even play it's an ancient memory it's in there somewhere it's in there somewhere Riding but the bike yeah uh, i would play games like Marble Blast Gold, random website games, yeah. the most random things ever. And I guess I got into Call of Duty at like six or seven. So a mix wow. of YouTube and Call of Duty just kind of put me together. Your brother, you mentioned Chuck. How much older is he? He's five years older than me. And in your family, is it you and him or are there others? It's, uh, yeah, it's just us. If I were to just like meet Chuck, yeah. do you feel like I'd be like, yeah, that's JHB's brother. Is he similar to you or different? Um. I think I think yeah that resemblance would come in hand. <laughs> or, I I think people would realize because people have like since my brother works with other creators, some some of those creators have looked at him in a way of like I know him but I don't know him. And then once oh yeah I'm JHP's brother. It's like ah that makes sense. So, right, they like sense something going on. Yeah. <laughs> what do you feel like is the biggest thing you and your brother are different on actually? Different on. Um. He is very big at like building things. Whether <laughs> that, that would imply you don't build anything. I, I don't build it. Whether it's like because he he'll, he can build like whether it's a computer or like work on a car stuff like that. He's very outdoorsy. 
I'm very inside Z. <laughs> oh, wow. The two of you together, your powers combined. It works out. I mean, like, because we, we do a lot of the stuff together, like, uh, whether it's production, maybe, like, I yeah, maybe I can't set up most of the stuff, but, like, we're a good team when we work yeah, together on a certain thing. I also grew up as an inside child. <laughs> oh, well, there you grew go. a lot, played a lot of video games. For me, we talked a bit about before, but one of the reasons why I was so excited to meet Ludwig is, like, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Yeah. Right? It's, like was my main social activity growing up. Like, what I did for fun outside of, like, school and how I, like, made friends. Yeah. And actually, Super Smash Brothers Melee in, in, introduced me to the internet because I was really bad. I wanted to get good. So I started Googling. A lot of time I gave up a key Smash Bros. It sort of introduced me to, like, the world of social handles mm. and content. I mean... We've, we've all looked up, like, how to glitch the system in games. Yeah, how like, do I just beat, beat the shit out of my friend? And But, yeah, I think that entertainment I, idea just... it l Looking at those videos, it made me think, like, I want to be as helpful as this guy. Yeah. Whether it's, like, making my own content that, like, I feel like people would enjoy or just, like, even Ooh. making something that it's entertaining enough. So maybe you'll do, like, a game walkthrough channel... I'm not, well, eh, I think that was more on the uh, young side of me. I loved playing games, whether it was Warhawk, Call of Duty, Minecraft, GTA, Rocket League, CSGO. Damn, I just named all those really fast. Um, yeah. I, I think I can watch those, but at the same time, when I visualize myself in front of like me playing the game, that's, I feel like that's more of a stream thing versus like, yeah. I don't know how I can make it entertaining in a YouTube video, but on stream, if I'm just playing it, it's... I'm, I'm there with Chad. So I'm talking with What's them. so interesting is as you're talking through it in a weird way, like having funds now become work too. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that. I think it's that idea of you just want to satisfy anyone in order to like as well keep that audience there and rolling. Rolling. I hope I said my R. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. It's because like now you're like, oh, it's not just I play it. It's like, oh, but should I be streaming it? That's fair. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't stream as much as I used to, which I kinda I kinda miss, but um I think I'm moving I'm moving out of my uh, family house in like two months or something. Oh gosh. Wait, it's a big deal. So this will be your first standalone place. I think I'm moving in with people. Um okay. I'm still figuring that stuff out, but that's how it looks right now. But once I'm out, I'm hoping I can start to get into streaming more. So we'll see if that happens. That will truly be continuation of like JHB's college experience part two. I like hope. I living hope. in like a dorm or just living separate. It's with other it's, people. It's gonna be really weird. Yeah. What, like since since I was on Cutie's show, I don't have any experience cooking, <laughs> and I got the first. I got out on the first episode, so, so I, that's why your cupcakes were so bad. You've never made them before. The idea was we don't have any recipe on the show. So have fun making a cupcake. I'm like, oh my god. So you literally just made it from scratch. Yeah. So I poured in a bunch of flour in my frosting. I poured a bunch of eggs, raw eggs, all that stuff. I could see why Valkyrie called it disgusting. <laughs> okay. Well, on the one hand, like I get it because I also don't know how to cook. Like during COVID, I microwaved an egg in a mug because delivery services were out. They were no longer available during curfew. And, you know, you'd think I'd learn how to cook during that period. I did not. I'll be honest with you. I actually Googled how to boil water. That is something I would do, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, see? And I was insulted by the WikiHow instructions because... Were they looking at you as like, you fool? Well, or? they were written completely straightforward. They weren't treating me badly, but you can Google, you can find it. They tell you step one is look for your sink. If you're not sure what it is, it's the metal indentation in your counter with a faucet. That's where you realize like, oh, uh, well, now, now I'm hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was like... Really? You don't think I know where my goddamn sink is? And then also, but I am the one Googling how to boil water. That is, so. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, I, oh, I, oh I can, when I move out, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a total... Culinary chaos. I'm glad I'm able to do it because it's a learning experience that I really, I need, I think. <laughs> I feel you should like get really good and go on a training montage and then come back and present cutie and valkyrie with like the revised v2 ghp cupcake and see how that goes i showed them a photo of me cooking like fish because uh the day after my 
uh, appearance of me getting kicked off. <laughs> my dad worked with me to help me cook grilled Your fish. dad is he's just like, I cannot let the family name be tarnished. We will <laughs> teach you. Probably. He enjoys the content, so that's all that matters. But yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> so he taught you how to cook a fish. Uh, yeah, we made grilled something. Oh, God, even I don't remember. That's bad. I'm sorry. Hey, it's okay. In video games, it's usually just called fish, right? And yeah, yeah. you cook it. I mean, fish is fish, so we're fine. <laughs> Man, I feel like a lot of people will disagree with you on that. Okay, well, some fish is not fish, but I don't know. I, I, I've made something, so take it. At, or I, I want it at that. that to be like the tagline for the video. GHB, all fish is fish, except for some fish isn't fish. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 2023 watching myself back is so painful sometimes because oh, yeah well actually yeah i um i remember the first time actually yeah when i watch a tbh episode and it's just complete awkwardness i'm for the most of the time just i'm sorry for the camera by the way i'm i'm kind of just doing this the entire time oh, no are you are you stooping wait you want me to make it higher no i mean i meant like this uh when I'm watching my show for the first time, I'm always like this. I didn't know if I was getting out of frame right now. Oh, no, you were, you were 100% in frame. See, this is, a, you know, this is the mind of a creator. He is always thinking about how to make sure you all get to see him in his best light for common purpose. No, we've got you. We've got you locked in. So please continue with your... Every time I'm watching an episode, I'm freaking out because it's that idea of like, I can't believe I said that. This is cringe, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm enjoying it. People are going to watch this and get this perception of me. Oh, God. It's fun. I totally get it. So I was on a podcast recently called Under the Influence. Okay. And Nico actually was on it like a month ago. The style, it's very freewheeling, a little raunchy. So the premise is you all drink. You have hard seltzer. You go through drinking games and you answer questions about relationships. No. Okay. And I'm like a private person. Yeah. Up until about two months ago, my Instagram was completely private. I only made it public because I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing podcasts, which like for me, it's something I just enjoy getting to know you, period. Mm -hmm. And like, well, I guess we'll make content out of it. And I was like, okay, I need to make my Instagram public. So first of all, we actually didn't drink at all. I just went in. I was like, guys, like I'm going to do this Stone Cold Sliver. Yeah. I know your podcast is called Under the Influence, but please humor me. And they were super nice and chill about it. Good. I was like really happy and they asked me tons of questions. So it came out like really, really well. And actually I'm so happy I did it. It was a learning experience for me. I was like, oh, I can do this type of content too. But they did ask a lot of things about relationships where I was just like, I'm not comfortable talking about this and having other people hear it. I have easily embarrassed myself many times on my show to the point where it's like, as sad as it sounds, I've gotten used to it, which is good. But at the same time, bad. Well, you've weirdly, just like, you know, Jake Paul gets stronger the more you hate him. Yeah. It, like, actually makes his brand even better. I feel like for you, the embarrassment, it powers you to the next level. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, I enjoy it, but at the same time, I can't watch it back. And uh -huh. then it's like, do I enjoy it? It's a mix of, like, I'm glad I'm able to, I guess, open myself out there more, considering how quiet and, so like, socially yeah. awkward I was back then, and I still kind of am. But... Being able to kind of just be who I am on the content, in the content that I'm in, just makes it uh, just easier for me. I still kind of love that one TikTok you did with you meeting Amaranth and like oh cover handing her, and everyone's yeah. like, "My king." I had to talk to Amaranth into convincing her to let me film that TikTok, <laughs> and it worked. Her her it's manager was sitting there like watching, like, mm -hmm. I love just like out of the frame of the shot, the manager's just like, "Oh yeah, hundred percent," because I I don't. Like, I look up to, like, I, I still look up to creators, and, like, Amaranth, definitely one yeah, of them. Yeah, me too. So it's that idea of, like, I don't want to make her, whether it's uncomfortable or just, like, look at me different. I'm just going to try and film this TikTok with her. also hope it does well, considering, like, if Which it does did. well, she'll look at her. She'll look at that and be like, okay, I see this guy. I see this guy. The TikTok ended up getting, like, 800,000 likes, 4 million views. And I'm, I, I was just like... Yeah, it paid, it paid off. Sometimes you got to take a gamble and you also hope it'll do well because you also want to tell the creator like this is worth your time, all those things. Yeah, so I'm very glad I was yeah. able to do that with Amaranth considering like I was really worried about like just approaching creators in general. Like since I work at 100, 100 Thieves, I work on the social media side yeah. and some of my job, some of what my job is is whether it's TikTok or Twitter or Instagram, I work with the creators on making social content. So going up to them saying, hey, I want to film this TikTok. That will still stress me out sometimes considering mm. 
their time is valuable. Yeah. I work behind the scenes as well. And like, yeah, even though I'm a creator sometimes, I look at my behind the scenes more mainly because like one, it's my job. Started there. Yeah. Uh I don't want to give these creators like any wasted time considering where they're on their time. Let's just film the TikTok, hope it does well. It could be stressful at times considering like, oh, that TikTok was a flop, so I did all that for nothing. Or it could even be worth it because the TikTok was the best thing I ever I've ever made. Yeah. So depends. I totally get that, right? Even as we're shooting this, I'm like, JHB's time is valuable. Like this is going through my head. I'm like, oh, I really hope it is well from a social perspective. From a conversational perspective, I'm just grateful I get to build my relationship with you. Yeah. more and like this is just fun and i'm getting to actually learn a lot about you more than we talk at parties thank you yeah, but there's that. a part of me the same way you've described it i'm like oh like i want to make sure it's worth your time right and so yeah. i'm saying it's, it's funny because you're like oh i feel this i'm like i feel this toward you and i bet others will too i appreciate that thank you it is like this really interesting dynamic because like so both of us have been at many casual events too right yeah. like stream rewards uh the otv christmas party and what's really fascinating to your point on everyone's time is valuable, like con in his work. And like when we're at these social events, people actually are not creating that much content. Yeah. Because I think there's almost this like unspoken, like, hey, can we just be like normal for a moment? That is true. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's me in the back thinking, guys, I got this hilarious party tweet. They're just like, bro. I got, got the, I got this banger. Just you wait for it. Your <laughs> tweets are good. Like they're funny. Thank you. I wish I did it more. But lately I've just like, in the last year yeah. I've... St- I, I've just stopped tweeting as much. Mainly one, it's better for me mentally because I would spend all of my time thinking about like this tweet that I made needs to be better than the next or than the last one. And I've luckily toned it down to the point where it's like, I'm just happy to have an audience that enjoys making what I enjoy making. So I'm just going to roll with that. How actually do you feel mentally good? Like, for example, I do therapy and that helps a lot. Or I'll like go and work out or pickleball for me. That's the reason why I go do so much pickleball. Yeah. To deal with the stress and chaos of the rest of my life. What have you found? Like what's helpful for you there? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, figuring it out. I think it's uh it definitely was hard maybe like one or two years ago, back when I was in a transition stage of like, mm. am I gonna end up going to college or am I gonna end up going to uh work with Hundred Thieves? Because the idea of me going to college and stuff was such like a big priority at such a young age, mm-hmm. like even yeah, seventeen. Yeah, when I was in high school, like it was the whole I I want to go into a good college, even though a good chance because of my grades I wasn't, but I wanted to go to college. Well, regardless. the funny thing is now, given everything you've done, you'd have a very good shot. Thank you. It's kind of cool if you think about it. Yeah, I it's weird for me to think about like the, I guess I sometimes forget that I did actually drop out of college. College dropout, boys and girls. Yeah. (laughs) But at the same time, I feel like it was really good for me in the way of like, I'm ending up having to learn stuff, uh, whether it's on my own or just like becoming an adult. It's fun for me. But at the same time, it was really mentally bad maybe one or two years ago because I would overthink every little thing I would post online, I would do for my job, how I, I would interact with others. It's weird. But I think also because since I... um since I became very popular online at like that 17 to 18 stage of when I'm actually years. becoming an adult, it's weird to visualize the idea of I'm a child in my content. At the same time, I'm kind of getting older and I want to, I don't want to lose that. Mm. So it's weird. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, when I was like 17, 18, figuring out f- what's going on in my life, if I also had the pressure of knowing that other people are watching me, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And I'm, I'm just very glad I'm able to do it because, I mean, as much as I'm awkward on content sometimes, uh, it's fun for me because I get to show who I am. People, can, people will enjoy it um, as well as like just... The idea of, like I said, meeting people uh, in person is just, it's its awesome for me. It's, yeah. it's the greatest feeling ever because it's like getting to meet these people that think I'm like, whether it's entertaining or just like they enjoy watching what I do. It's its fun. I, I like I it. That. All right, let's do level two. I think we're ready. Let's do it. Pick a card, any card, middle one. Got it. When was the last time you surprised yourself? Oh, gosh. When was the last time I surprised myself? Um, I I don't know. What's a good example? 
Uh, Express yourself right there a little bit. That is the app. That is a good one. Oh, man. When was the last time? I, I think when I, got, as sad as this sounds, when I got my driver's license. Oh, that's not sad at all. Well, why was this such a surprise? Did you think you were just not going to? It was that idea of like, there was no way that I'm able to, I, w- I would watch my parents drive in a car, whether it's on the freeway or whether it's just in general. And I would look at that and be like, there's no way. There's no way you could put me in this seat and think I know what I'm doing. In this rolling death metal trap contraption. 100%. And now I probably drive like 50 minutes to an hour to work back and forth every day. I feel like maybe I'm reading a lot into it, but there's like a lot of symbolic meaning there because like when you're a kid, right? Like driving is just something like your grownups do. It's not something you do. It's like something your parents do. Yeah. And as soon as you start to learn and do it yourself, which again, it's just like signifying like, hey, like you are now growing up. I'm getting to that point in my life where it's like, wow, this stage of uh, growing up. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, like there's a reason like Olivia Rodrigo, whatever, didn't she call her first license like driver's license? Her first album was like driver's license or something. That's just like, I think it was, uh, I don't want to, let's say, I think it's Sour. Okay, it was not. It was, sorry, wait, uh, she, she, wait, she. I feel like she had a song. The, the song was Driver's License. license. The oh, album was the sour. Album sour. No, you're I, right, you're I right. hope I'm right. That could I'm be wrong. I'm pretty sure you're right. And if either of us is wrong, we're getting tons of comments. And people know, be like, I'm these so guys don't even know sorry, music. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Oh, man. I think for me, the last time I surprised myself. I think. I'm trying to think back, not necessarily to the last time, but sort of to what you said, that moment where it's just like, life is changing. How do I feel about it? Yeah. I mean, I'm still surprised when a video or a tweet of mine still pops off. So there's that. <laughs> You're breaking bad one. 1.5 mil, baby. I was shocked. <laughs> you know, when I learned to drive, yeah, I'm still a terrible driver. Oh. Like people are genuinely afraid to get in the car with me. My co-founder, he hates it when I drive. Damn. Whenever I'm dating someone, they hate it when I drive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And I was seeing someone who it was a really big deal for her to be like, okay, you need to like go like pick me up. Yeah. You know, within reason. And I'd be like, can I just like Uber? Oh. It doesn't quite have the same. I feel like <laughs> hearing that just hits as like a oh, okay. Yeah, that's my life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sure you'll get better. When I lived in downtown LA, this is before coming to the West Hollywood area here. My studio, I had a very small studio, and I had my bed, and I had a squat rack with a bench and a barbell, and no couch and no TV. That was it. So you walk in, there'd be my bed, and you walk into my kitchen, and there's just like the squat rack and the barbell. And I say this because I think sometimes when people Maybe this is the other question. It's like, what's something people wouldn't expect looking at you? It's just like, people are always like, how are you a functional human being? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, <laughs> that's, I think that's what I'm worried about when I'm moving out. Moving out. It's like, what am I going to do? My parents do a lot of stuff for me. It can't be worse than what I was doing. Oh, no. I mean, like, I mean, look at where you are now. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> well, yes, but like... That's because, okay, fine. But like there was a period of time where like you'd walk in, it was like my bed is my squat rack. Yeah. And like think about like inviting anybody over. Can you imagine? Be like, cool. So you can sit on the bed or the bench. They're just like, okay. Yeah, it's terrible. It's horrid. And I would just like eat Chipotle every day. Actually, I still eat Chipotle every day. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel relating to your point. I'm like, how do I become a real human being? I'm like, dude, it's been like years since I've been in college. I'm still figuring that part out. I mean, how old are you? Take a guess. 26? I'm 31. I would have not guessed that. I'm not even kidding. Oh, wow. I'm Asian. Oh. <laughs> so my story, I went to school. So I went to Harvard, 18 to 22. It's wild. Okay. Yeah, dude, I was a very hardworking guy. I was like, I need to get in. That's why I think what you're doing, I respect so much. Thank because you. the harder thing is to do something that's a little bit different and a little bit scarier. The easier thing, I think, is I wasn't really deliberate. I was just like, everyone else goes to school. I guess I will also. And I regret that. Really? I graduated. Yeah, because I think it's fine to go to school. Many people do. But I think it's important to do the things with intentionality. Like you are doing something because you really want to do it. Not because you're just like, well, I'm not sure, but everyone else is. 
It's so weird you're saying that considering. I mean, you went to Harvard. That's wild. Like, yeah, no, it was great. Yeah. Well, actually, I was super depressed throughout a lot of it, but it was I can imagine. helpful <laughs> because I can tell people I went to Harvard now. <laughs> That's, That's like fair. Most of the That's value. fair. But like, again, I don't think I went into it for the quote unquote right reasons. I just went into it because I was like, oh, it's like prestigious and I don't know what to do with my life. That's why I think it's pretty cool. Like you like have this clear POV, like you can't accidentally find yourself into what you're doing, right? You had to make a series of decisions. Like I'm going to do this. I'm going to work hard. Oh, I'm going to go on camera. Oh, like, should I go back to school? No, I'm going to choose to keep doing this. These are like very deliberate actions. And I admire that. And I think for me, I went to school. I worked in investment banking on Wall Street. I worked in management consulting. I worked at Instagram, actually helping build Instagram live. But every step of the way, it felt very like, oh, I don't really know if I want to do it, but I don't know what I want to do. So that's, that's totally understandable. Yeah. It's only about the past three, four years that I left to go start Carrot that I feel like life's actually become interesting and I get to do the things I want to do and meet the people I want to meet. What do you think one thing is that college like really benefited for you, like that you think about a lot? I think the biggest thing... You know, we talk a lot about being awkward. And you know what's so funny, JHB, is people watching us probably wouldn't necessarily know that. And by the way, we're going to have so many commenters be like, shut the f up. You are so awkward, dude. <laughs> as soon as I say that, I already know. But a lot of people honestly be like, oh, well, like we're literally like talking on a podcast. I think that's why we're much better in, like you said, one on one yes. discussions versus a group discussion. I, I was on Hassan's podcast, Hassan and Will's with uh, Jack Manifold, if you know him. I don't know Jack, but yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, a, a, he's a Minecraft creator. I was quiet for most of it. He's a group. Group. But like one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like it's something I can actually jump into because not only do I have to, but also it just it makes it just so much more easy. Oh, I love one-on-ones. It's like I get to know you at the end of this more like as JHB as like a human being. And that is precious and that is hard because there's so many things going on in life for us to each dedicate some time to doing that. Like yeah. that is special. That is to my earlier point, that is intentional. And I really value intentional things. I think also on my show, TBH, there's a production crew, like literally like just watching as well as like the seats are angled like this. So we're oh, both facing like. forward towards that camera, for example. Yeah. Which is like, so it's what do you, it, it's very awkward. It's like, oh, the two of us, we're just having like a conversation. This is actually how I talk to people. I look off into the distance to the audience. Yeah, exactly. It's weird. It's, it's weird. But I mean, that's why like one-on-one -on -one looking into the eyes, it just helps like give that idea of well, like, this I'm is a direct someone. reflection of, again, I'm also new to being on camera. And I meant when I said earlier, the only way I'm going to do content is if it's the sort of thing that I'm just going to do naturally yeah. and like naturally this isn't too far off from if we just got dinner. We just like talk and we're do talking, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like way chiller. And so I say this to be like, yes, there's a few extenuating factors. We're one-on-one. -on -one, it feels natural. We already know each other that people watching might be like, okay, they're not like completely awkward people, but like, I get why you say it because I do think of myself very much that as well. So I think college was the biggest thing on like beginning to learn how not to be that way and like talk to people. I think that's fair. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you're around that like social setting, you kind of get introduced to many people that are, whether it's around your age or just like people that have the same mindset, it, it helps out a lot. Yeah. Also, I had no friends for freshman year. So it was also like, yes, but it's just like a point of survival. You just like, oh, in a one on one, like, well, okay, of course I'm going to talk. If you just go through and you have like no friends at a yeah. certain point, you're going to be like, hey, I would like to do something different, please. I am now open to suggestions. I think it also depends on the discussion, Yeah. which luckily for us and because of you, we kind of have like a format of like what we want to talk about Yeah. versus like when I'm meeting someone for the first time, I am still like very bad at making conversations. <laughs> <coughs> I coughed and laughed for some reason. Conversation. Oh, really? So I don't know. That's why I like this too. <coughs> because as you can tell, it's very free form. Some people are like, oh, you're going to like go through every single question. I'm like, no, like the whole point is I think sometimes with constraints comes creativity. Having a little bit of structure is a good thing. It gives us something to like riff off of. Right. It's not just us looking at each other. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's, let's do another one. Let's do, I think we're ready for, let's do one more level two and then we'll get to level three. Okay. Have you changed your mind about anything recently? That's a good one. That's, that is a very good one. Have I changed my mind about anything recently? Um, have I? Have I? Have I? 
That's hard. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I think I was in that stage of like, since I'm moving out, do I really want to? I, I had the idea of like, I, I want to live by myself, kind of. But then there was also that mindset of like, it's much easier if I'm just living with other people because of all, <coughs> of also just like rent in general. <laughs> it's a little much. bit like of an in between. <coughs> I apologize, audience. I don't know why. I just call. call you don't need to apologize for I bodily care. functions. I care. GHB cares so much about all of you listening. He is telling his lungs to keep the phlegm in because he trying. can't let it out. I am trying. <laughs> This man will stop breathing for you if it's too loud. I went 40 minutes in without a cough. All of a sudden, I coughed four times. Hey, we've got water. You know, I know <gasps> I do, which is why I'm like, why? Um, yeah, I think just that mindset of I was going to move out alone just because I feel like I, I just, I'd just i rather sometimes be alone. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it, it would not be good for me considering like, how am I going to live? What's that going to be like? People have, People being around me, I feel like is better for me socially. So, Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. I like to keep a lot to myself. And yet, you spend so much time talking to other people. It's, I mean, I think <laughs> as sad as it sounds, Twitter was a big help for me to make discussion and kind of just introduce me to just like discussion in general. I don't know. But I, I, I think also just appearing in content where I'm very awkward and have I have to be engaging with whether it's people on screen or yeah. just uh, somehow make it entertaining. I think that was just a big help in general. And it like really opened up like mm. the quietness in me. Although when I'm like off camera and I'm still around, like there's a good chance I'll still be socially awkward and quiet mainly because I just, it's that it's just who I am. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Have you ever heard of the big five personality test? I'm not. So, it measures you across five different traits. It's considered to be more scientifically rigorous than Myers-Briggs or Harry Potter houses, okay. shockingly. The five traits, they spell the word OCEAN as an acronym. So O is for openness. How open are you to things? C is for conscientiousness. Are you really organized or are you a little bit of a <laughs> show? Okay. E is for extroversion. How introverted or extroverted you are. A is for agreeableness. Yeah, is it easy to get along well with you or are you a little bit pricklier? And N is for neuroticism, how much you worry about things. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. I've taken this test before. I genuinely tend to be very, very open, mm -hmm. unopenness, conscientiousness, very, very low. <laughs> this goes to, I cooked eggs by putting them in a mug. My previous living situation didn't have a couch. None of those sorts of things. Yeah. I'm bad at driving. E is for extroversion. I actually started off much more introverted. I think over the years, I've gotten more extroverted. I think partly due to what you said, because you just like interact with people and you like learn that they're not all mean and they don't all hate you. And then you like learn yeah. how to like talk. A is for agreeableness. I started off very disagreeable. I'm actually far more agreeable now. Okay. And N is for neuroticism, which I'm still like high as Sean. <laughs> That's the, what you alluded to, like analyzing and thinking. Yeah. And I think over time, like opening up myself more, I think I've been able to, when it comes to content, just laughing at myself in jokes yeah. as well as like, yeah, I will find it like cringy. I th like, I think there's like, I, I think there's maybe like two or three TBH episodes I haven't watched that are out just because of the idea of like in the moment it was fun to film, but at the same time, so chaotic for me to relive. I'd rather not just see it again. I Although like it happened and that's enough. Yeah, it, it happened. And that's that, that, that is enough. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think just opening up myself and we're being able to laugh at myself. It's It's good for me to like. I don't want to say give criticism of myself, but just kind of visualize. I keep saying that word. Just being able to see what I'm, what I can do, and how how I react to it in situations because it can make me learn on like, do I do that again in the future? I don't well, know. what's what's something you feel like you can now watch and laugh at yourself that in the moment or previously you would have been like a lot more anxious about? I think just um, hmm, I. I that depends. Uh, I I need to get better when it comes to like I, editing con edited content of me like saves me a lot because a lot of the audience doesn't see the cutting and stuff, whether it's mm. like me just being completely awkward and stuttering or just I don't know because like when it comes to a podcast like this, I can talk one on one discussion. Oh, we could just be natural. We can be natural when it comes to like a content like video like a challenge one or something. 
I want to be engaging, but at the same time, whether it's physical or just yeah. like being there with a group, it's hard for me to like just be as engaging as like, I to can. To be natural in a weird way, yeah. artificially, unnaturally trying to be natural. Right. Considering like if you have people like uh, if I'm filming a video with Courage or Brooke and all, all of them, they're they are mostly known for like just being such good content creators. I mean, like Courage used to be a caster. He can say whatever he wants. Brooke, she's insanely like hilarious on her stream. She can do whatever she wants and it's great. It's that idea of I want to fit in with this content, but at the same time, I don't really know what to add on to it. Mm. So I'm going to hope that the editor, shout out editor and 100T content. I hope that the editor can make me look good in the stuff because just know I'm trying my hardest to be entertaining or engaging but sometimes it's hard because i also fear the idea of like i'm joining in this conversation i don't really know if i'm going to add on with something yeah. comedic or if it's going to be like me making a, a joke i think is funny and then the the, the room just so goes fun. quiet so interesting you're really focused on you're first of all it's like you're playing with like the best of the best yeah right? it's like you're playing with soccer and like messi's like your teammate over there and the yeah. other one's like Ronaldo, whatever. Right. And you're describing like mentally, it feels like you're just trying to keep up. Bas yeah, basically. <laughs> when in reality, like, you know, they've asked you to be there for a reason. What you can do, you being you is value enough in itself. I think that's, that's really why I appreciate 100 Thieves. It's that yeah. idea of they've, ch they've taken a chance on me and like, for one, the show, a lot of people enjoy it, which I'm very thankful for. And yeah. just being able to work with these creators, which I I mean, I've looked up to them, like even before I joined 100T or even before I was like, the goal was making content. Just looking up to them and being able to work with them was such like an incredible thing. Like I had uh, Anthony Padilla from Smosh on my show, like maybe yeah. like uh, a few months ago. And that was amazing for me to even think about. And then like, Three weeks ago, Ian from Smosh followed me wow. on Twitter. And when I got that, because they were my favorite YouTubers back in like uh, the early 2010s, when I, when mm -hmm. I got those notifications of like, I mean, not only Anthony being on my show, but like both of them follow me on Twitter now, it was that thought of like, they know who I am. That That is amazing. I love that. To feel known. It's what you it, care about. It's amazing. Yeah. I love that. To your point also on camera persona. Yeah, you're coming off very authentic right now which is pretty cool so either you are just being natural and you're being comfortable or you're the best goddamn method actor <laughs> oh, i think i'm just very comfortable comfortable right now <laughs> no that's great and to your point oh gosh i still get that dynamic when you're like on camera with other creators you want to be like i want to be entertaining so i've been in like a few videos yeah i'm usually like in the background pretty funny but when ludwig did his smash invitational i was really excited because in this stream you can see my arm <laughs> yeah like they have, they have like the, they have like the caster's couch and they're like talking and then you like see me like i'm not intentionally trying to be in the shot i just happened to be there right and i was watching it later i was like oh like that's, that's me that's me and so like just or like by virtue of doing what i do i am sometimes just like in the background of like random things but sometimes creators actually ask me to talk and i remember i did one it was uh youtuber out of vegas he's like hey i think carrot's really interesting i'd love for you to like fly down like talking about carrot and i think i can make a video out of it and i was like oh like thanks man that's like super kind of you and they're like we're doing this shot and after every single one he's like cool like do it again but like natural and i feel like what does that mean he's like when you talk with me it's fine but when you're looking at the camera it's not and i'm like well okay let me force myself to be natural. I'm sure that's going to work. It's hard. Though. I feel like the whole forcing thing, it just comes off as, it, it, it doesn't feel as authentic. Right. And that's the hard part. It's like, that, that's why I enjoy like mainly being myself in the content because yeah. I, that's just who I am. That's how like, I, I just enjoy it. That's like why it's that. good to have you there in the first place. It's just be you by definition. Just yeah. be you. And, and then when someone's saying something like, actually, can you try and not be you? That's when it's like, Wow, you know, I never thought of it that way, and I think that's exactly what's going on. He was in a way being like, "Don't be you," <laughs> and it's like, but that's not how I am. Like maybe if I was an actor, yeah, I could get away. But with like, it. I'm not we an actor. Done I'm that. me. <laughs> yeah, I'm me. Like that's like, that's such a good point. Like an actor is almost trying to put on the character and persona of someone else, but as creators, it's almost more you're just being yourself to an audience, right? So I went and did this, and at the end, 
he was like, oh, like FYI, like we don't always like use all the footage, like we'll read after, like see how it is. It's like, cool. And it's been two years and the video has not come out. And I just like, okay. (laughs) So for a long time, I was actually really, really afraid to come on camera after that. I did one more after that as a podcast over Zoom. Yeah. And, or an interview rather over Zoom. And at the end of the, it was put up on YouTube. You know, like people come, whatever. And you know, everyone's like, oh, I hope I do a good job. I hope like people don't hate on me. I got a DM from a medical nurse on LinkedIn being like, I'm afraid the protrusion on your neck in this timestamp no. of this video, is it a tumor? You might want to have it checked out. And? It was, I don't know. I haven't gotten checked out. Okay. I don't think it's a tumor. I think my neck looks fine. But that's why whenever people are like, oh gosh, like I look so bad today. Like I haven't put on makeup. I'm like, okay, but have you ever had concerned parties reach out worried that you are medically dying based off your performance on camera? I think we don't, I think we, I feel like we don't think about who is really watching the content because like I would look at the demographic on a YouTube video that whether I've made or 100 Thieves has made, um, seeing people from like countries all over the world with an actual number of who is watching them, yeah. like whether it's like 2,000 from Italy, I've seen it, 3,000 from France. That is mind blowing to me. Because it's that idea of just that many people from around the world, yeah. like knowing who I am, is is really cool to me. Just because I don't know, it's 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 amazing to think Mr. about. Mr. Worldwide, exactly. Yeah, I mean, considering like some people, since they don't create content, they're mainly known like uh, for just who they are in their town, stuff like that. That's a bad example, but just like they're known in their area. Yeah, this is like a new phenomenon in the past 10 years. Like before in the history of humanity, like to become known like that, I mean, even like famous people during their time weren't always that well known because like we didn't have like books or internet. This is like a pretty new thing to like adapt your mind to. Just the idea of someone like in France, just knowing who you are, or even Russia is is wild to me, but it's it's amazing. Chat. Could be anywhere. Chat. Exactly. All right, let's do level three. Let's do a couple here. Let's do it. You do the honors. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'll go somewhere in the middle. Yeah. All right. What has this conversation taught you about yourself? Um, I think I'm very big about just opening up in general. And I think... Uh, ow. <laughs> I think just good discussion about... I love you, like, physically opened yourself up, too. You're like... Openness. I just got really comfortable. <laughs> I think just being able to talk and just kind of visualize everything that's going on uh, with what I do, for example, it's it's it, I, I don't know. It's it's very nice for me because it just makes me think about like how did I end up getting here, and um, it I don't know. It just helps out a lot. Yeah, it's almost like you are living your life. So sometimes it's hard to see it for its whole. Yeah. And like, again, you, my guy have gone through like training arcs, right? It's almost, you're literally wearing a jujitsu Kaizen ah. shirt from the jujitsu Kaizen hundred thieves collab. Right. And like, again, what kicks off the entire plot of the story is like being recruited to like a school it's right. like, this is a shift in all the protagonist's lives. You are going to come here now and interact and things are going to happen. And in a weird way, it sounds like 100 Thieves was that for you. That's why I liked how you mentioned 100 Thieves seems like its own university kind of because this yeah. is your college experience, you said. And I was yeah. like, I've never really thought about it like that either. So, I mean, yeah, that's one yeah. thing I also learned. <laughs> I think for me too... I'm so new to be on camera. It's very refreshing or rather I feel safer when I'm like, okay, like you do content and I wouldn't know from listening and watching you that you described like, Hey, like this was hard. Like that earlier on you would not perform and be on camera the way you wanted that you would worry about these numbers. It actually just makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because I worked at hundred thieves for a few months before I was even put into content because I was working behind the scenes. But luckily enough, I had an online presence on Twitter just because I would post the dumbest memes and just jokes that I thought were funny, but I'll, maybe that some of the employees found them funny, not everyone, <laughs> <laughs> but it somehow worked. Cause I mean, it just got to the point where hundred thieves, wanted to include me in content and then i ended up becoming like uh just recognizable yeah part of the brand yeah so that's actually how sorry so you were working there but you continued to post memes on twitter people liked it people at 100 thieves liked it and that's why they're like wait he could actually be a creator in himself 
Right. I have had tweets that 100T has told me to take down, which is understandable. Like, <laughs> I, tw- <laughs> I mean, your Twitter handle is literally 100 Thieves, GHVT. Uh, yeah, but like the, the, the first few months I got uh, employed, I was still tweeting the dumbest memes I thought were hilarious. But now that I'm in a professional setting, <laughs> they were just looking at me. I was like, what is wrong with you? And then I think once they actually had a talk with me about like, uh, it wasn't like a stress like get your shit together type thing. It was just like a, since you're with a brand, you should kind of understand like, yeah, don't go off the brand too much. And that, that I think this was a few months after I got hired. And I think that's when I realized like I'm in that stage where I'm actually becoming an adult. I need to take everything seriously. Wow. Although I still act like a child sometimes. I, and I work in social media, so I kind of like have a much better understanding. You're of a like, professional now. I have an understanding of like, what is acceptable and what is not, but my God. <laughs> See, I actually think that's a superpower. Here's why. So many people blow up as creators having never actually worked in a corporate setting before, which is totally fine. Yeah. But there's a part of their skill set they're going to be missing, and maybe that becomes relevant when they're trying to do more serious collaborations with brands or, like many creators these days, are trying to build their own companies. Right. And now I'm realizing for you... That's something you have because of your unique set of experiences others don't have. You have the creative side, but you've also worked in a corporate setting. What you just said, being like, oh, yeah, like I realize now how important it is to be on brand and like being a professional and working with people. Most people in this life, they have only that experience or only the experience of being a creator. And you actually get to say, I have a bit of both. And the same way when you're on camera, the point is you just get to be you. I'm excited in life. Right. You've got these different experiences. Now you just get to do what comes naturally and we'll see what happens. I think that's why like just everything that I've done, like it just feels so unplanned, but that's why I love it. I mean, like I like three years ago, I would have never imagined myself having a show. I have a show. Yeah. I would have never imagined myself meeting these creators as well as like interviewing people like, whether it's Anthony from Smosh or Gunna or, wow, what an interesting duo. Uh, <laughs> I want to see them interact with each other. Oh, no, that would be a... I, you think Gunna likes Smosh? <laughs> I don't know, but that's why it's content. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think just like you never really know what the future holds. And as scary as that can be sometimes, it's also kind of exciting because I think it just... You get the idea that you're going to do something fun as long as you make it fun yeah, and as well as you work hard towards it. And I remember I was working like really, really hard in the beginning of hundred thieves. And that's when I felt like being able to get in that position that I, like, I remember I got uh, the email that I was getting offered a job from hundred thieves and 17 year old me was like freaking out. It was on my mind, like every hour of wow. that week or like every second of every hour of that time scale. I think it was like February, 2020. Yeah. And it was just, it was amazing to think about, especially with like a bunch of my friends and even like my audience at the time, just like rooting for me because I mean, the sure. people I was working with, like the mob, they were with hundred thieves and I kind of came up with them as like the, the young editor guy in the background mm-hmm. and just being able to get in that role of like, I'm at a, I'm at a brand now that's very well known in the gaming industry. It's just a great opportunity overall. Uh, it was just a really great moment for me, especially at 17. I love that. Thank you. Let's do one more and then we'll end it. Sounds good. Now I know how you know Classy. Oh, I love Classy. <laughs> so goofy, but I love him. Oh, okay, let me... Oh, wild card. I don't like this one. I want to read the wild card. I'm not going to... Yeah, you I'm can not, read, I'm not, read I'm not going to do card. whatever it says. I'm just... <laughs> dare your partner to do something outside of their comfort zone in the next week. Oh, I already do that. I'm on content. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this, this is good. Okay. When in this game did you feel most connected to me? Do you know what I'm going to say? So uh, I, I don't. That's what I want to know. When I looked in your eyes. <laughs> You're but, like, it was all downhill from there. I, when you talked about um, just the awkwardness that we both ha- uh, have endured with. I hope. Is that a word? Endured? I think it is. All right, let's it's see. also a move in Pokemon. Endure. 
There you go. It's well, when you get hit by an attack and you live with one HP. So because of that, I know it's a word. This is bad. I haven't played Pokemon. It's okay. We'll teach you one day. We'll get you into it. And there's no other chapter of your life that's about to begin. I have held a fancy Pokemon card, but that was just for YouTube thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> JHB, I don't even play this. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think when you talked about just the, uh, not only the Alchemist, but just like we're never really, we were never really on camera. Yeah. And then being put in camera, uh, I think when you mentioned that, it just kind of gave that insight of like, we've both been introduced in basically the same way. And it's amazing because we both do basically that now. And it's yeah. awesome. I actually, I felt that was actually was in my mind on a more serious note. I was like, well, what actually, I kind of, I did have a moment. I looked at, I think because we were chatting, but like we were looking at each other, but like into each other's eyes. So that was, the, there was that like initial moment when we did, it was like, oh, it was nice. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. I love that. I, 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 I actually, eyes. I really like that. Yeah. It was actually really lovely. And your second point around the awkwardness. Yeah, I think you and I, because both of us, we started being around creators. Right. Like working with them. And so we were a part of this world, right? Like, you know, we've we've run into each other organically, like multiple times. Yeah. Just like being in LA, right? Right. And that sort of evolved when you get to work with creators to being like, well, like, maybe I can talk with you. And that turning into content. And so that's when I saw you at that party a little while ago, a couple months ago, I was like, oh yeah, like the interview content you did, it, it did actually help inspire me when I was thinking through like, what's the sort of content I could do? Yeah. <laughs> Having a conversation. Cause that's what I actually like to do anyways. And it feels way more natural to me than like today we made 5,000 pop tarts and I ate them all. Right. Every one of them. I think that's why like a big thing is just enjoying the content. Yeah. Or enjoying making the content that you want to make. I think that's like a big priority that, I mean, especially creators that are interested out there. I think just making what you want to make and thinking about that more than what the view count is, it's a big help. Trust me. <laughs> it's, um, it, it benefits you more because you can look back on that content and be proud of what you made versus the idea of you looking back at that content and thinking it didn't do well, so it sucked. Like, mm, it's, it's mainly what you want to make that you should be proud of. At least I love that. That's what I hope. <laughs> but I, I still hide my uh, Twitch view count. I can't look at that. <laughs> I get it. All right. Sweet. Thanks so much for making time. Hey, thank you for having me.